Italian families being what they are, occasionally uh, people have different points of view. My father left in 1965 yeah. uh, to start Robert Mondavi Winery in 66. Uh, it was, uh, in looking back, it was uh, a very traumatic time for our family then. Um, but it gave my, uh, my family, my father, the opportunity of embracing new ideas. Uh, to go from where we were to take it to a more mature level of uh, understanding. Uh, and he did so in 1966 uh, with the intention then of continuing to learn. So I was able to join my father and work with him for 30 years as the winemaker at Robert Mondavi. Uh, I was able to work with uh, three winemakers from Mouton Rothschild in developing Opus One. That was great fun. I loved it. Uh, uh, and so our, we continued to advance in our thinking. Uh, we developed relationships in Italy with the Frescobaldi family. We owned Ornelia there for an altogether too short a time. We also were able to have a relationship with Eduardo Chadwick in Chile with the Senya wines. That was uh, terrific. But all of that came to an end uh, because the uh, Robert Mondavi company went public in 93 and there was an unfriendly takeover in uh, 2004. We were devastated. Our board became more interested in uh, financial elements than in wine or in continuity. And I think that they overused my father's good name, I believe, against my uh, urging. But uh, uh, we did it any they did it anyway. We, it was done anyway. Uh, so there were some uh, very difficult times, but the company was taken over. And at this point, I had the opportunity of doing what my father had done. At the, at the same age of 53 same years age, old, yes. I, he was 53, I was 53 yes. when I began continuing with him and my sister. Yes. Um, we um, uh, evaluated what we wanted to do and we wanted to continue. When my father had left Charles Krug. Mm -hmm. He had been working there for 30 years with his father um, and um, uh, he knew what he was doing. He knew about the wines of the world and he wanted to be able to have Robert Mondavi Winery dedicated to pursuing the best. Yes. And with this he started a brand new winery um, to get away from all the problems of the past. Uh, at, however, at the beginning of that phase we were still trying to repress the problems of the past. So our winemaking was more on repression of fault. As with, with Robert Mondavi Winery, we began to, uh, once we had cleanliness down, we began to look to enhancement of virtues. How do we take something and build it up? How do we nourish it? So we began to notice that processing the fruit aggressively as we did in the 50s and in the 60s, took a lot out. It took the problems out, but it took the strengths out too. So as we had a strong base of a clean winery, then we were able to embrace nature more completely. That is when we began to stop filtering, stop centrifuging. We began to utilize the yeast, first with Sauvignon Blanc. To, uh, we found that it gave more richness to the wine. We then began to do barrel fermentation. <clears throat> this is all in the 70s. Mm -hmm. Barrel fermentation for Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc. We found that if we could stir the lees and keep it suspended in the wine and uh, care for the health of the lees, uh, we found that the wine itself would become creamier. Uh, the uh, oak would be integrated. The tannins would be integrated. And so all of this led to more richness and creaminess. Continuum, we began to apply that to our red wine making. 75% uh, of our fermentation is oak. Yes. Roughly 25% is cement. And with that, we are able to then be able to, uh, with the oak, it gives more, more range of personality, more complexity, yeah. uh, greater depth, but uh, it's, it's broader range. The cement, there's more minerality and more vibrancy of the wine. 
as contrast with stainless steel, which maintains more hardness. Mm -hmm. So that's perhaps the first step, is what, how do you ferment the wines? That has an impact, everything has an impact. Yes. So um, then we would uh, keep the wines in the, in the, the, uh, with the skins for maybe 20 to 35 days, mm -hmm. depending upon the individual variety and the block. We have about 37 different blocks in Continuum, and we have uh, individual tanks to be able to maintain the differences so we can discover, we can learn about that individual block very, very carefully and understand, did we prune it right? Did we, have, did we uh, harvest it properly? Was there the proper amount of crop? Was there, did we do proper thinning? All of those things, we can have proper feedback to that. Um, the, um, when we have the fermentation, you know, it'll start off with cold soak, then active fermentation. It, fermentation will be completed in about uh, 10 days. Mm -hmm. Then we have a, a maceration up to about... And is that with the native yeast? Uh, we do pitch yeast now, uh, but we will be approaching native fermentation. But when, I, I think that it is an interesting philosophy. I think that the differences seem to be more transient. But uh, at any rate, I think that uh, the yeast do conduct the fermentation. They then will, will stir them below the cap in the fermenter to keep them healthy and bright and lively. Then we transfer the wine, young wine, into barrels. Now we are at about 80% new French oak, 20% once used French oak. Um, we're going to be de decreasing that so as to emphasize the decreasing the amount of new French oak from about 80% down to maybe 70% mm -hmm. um, for the purpose of allowing that site, which has so much more to offer uh, because of the very low yields and the fabulous uh, um, moderate temperatures that we have. There's more nuance, more concentration, more elegance, I believe. And so as a result, we are able to then show off more of that site, more of that fruit. Um, we do carry the leaves into barrel, and um, we will have decreasing frequency. We'll stir after a few weeks, and then after a month, then after a longer time. Okay. But we, our élevage is more Burgundian than Bordelaise because we retain the leaves, and we have very few rackings, two, three rackings during the wine's life, as opposed to for a year. Uh, so six, seven, eight, as is done in the Medoc, or at Opus One, or as we did at Robert Mondavi. But by doing this, the yeast will then uh, nourish the wine, give more creaminess, and envelop the texture, and it is a healthier, um, that promotes ageability of the wine, and a silkier tannin. Mm -hmm. uh, we bottle the wine without fining or filtration, and... Uh, so that's, that's that. Yeah.